Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Welcome one and all. Uh, let me see who was here first. Okay. Let me know if, if uh, everything sounds okay. I had to work on that situation from yesterday, and I think I got the problem solved. Uh, Judy Matasid, thank you so much for being here first. Elaine Parker, thank you for staying up with us. Joya Moore, Joan Garcia, Carol Lund, Fancy Fancy, Connie Balmer, Connie Balmer. Thank you for being here, Connie Balmer. And let's see, who else is here? Mary H. <laughs> uh, let's see, Lydia Washington. Brenda Gray, uh, okay, uh, Judy Matassa, did I say that already? Lorna Williams, VS Speaks Royally. Okay, I'm just going to scroll all the way down. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I don't see anything otherwise. Oh, sounds great. Thank you, Love Wins Movement. Um, <clears throat> the moral of the story is, Read the instructions. <laughs> Read the instructions. So I even did an experiment to see um, if everything was okay. I, I spoke to someone at the uh, company, and they were they walked me through it. And actually, it was just a little problem solving I had to do. I just had it plugged in the wrong way. So, uh, but we're good now. So, yeah, and uh, <laughs> now I'm all, uh, I'm all, what do you call it? I'm all geared up like, um, hey, everybody. Hey, squatties. Hey, everybody. Now, who am I uh, pretending to be? Hey, everybody. Hey, Sussex squad. Get in here. Get in here. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? Can you figure out who that is? Hey, everybody. Come on in here, Sussex Squad. <laughs> no. No, maybe I'm not doing it right. Yes. Yes, absolutely. That was my Tisha Tales. Hey, everybody. Come on in here, Sussex Squad. Hey, Sussex Squad. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it was even better before. You know, I do some good impersonations, but um, it was even better before. I can't really get into the voice right now, but um, yeah. Oh, and by the way, you guys, uh, there is, uh, where did I see? Oh, yes, VS Royally is, speaks, uh, I'm sorry, VS Speaks Royally is here. Don't forget she has her own channel and it's called VS Royally. Um, uh, VS Speaks Royally. Why am I saying that backwards today? But uh, anyway, let me go ahead and put that up there at the top. You know, we like to feature our fellow content creators so that you always have a space, uh, a space space. No, so that you always have a safe space, not a space space. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Come on in here, Sussex squad. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> okay, so um, I got to stop doing that because you know me. I keep doing it all night. The last time I got fixated on somebody else, you know what happened. Hello, Ivy here. So, uh, yeah, I'm a... I, People make big impressions on me, especially people that are very cool. So, oh, you know what? Through all of that, I could have got my slides up by now. Let me get my slides up. Okay. Almost. Okay. Hey, everybody. Come on in here, Sussex squad. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, Sussex Squad. <laughs> you know, and the thing is, when Tisha does that, don't you feel like she's just talking to you? I mean, I get all excited. I'd be like, hey, Tisha. Hey. <laughs> You can't tell me she's not talking directly to me. So, anyway. Um, okay, so there you go. Hot Royal Mess. And let me take a look at the title again because, you know, I'll be messing up. Um, look like everything is spelled correctly. Yes. Okay, I think everything is good. Um <laughs> Hey, everybody, come on in here, Sussex Squad. <laughs> I got some tea for you today. <laughs> uh, okay, stop it. I got work to do. You guys, stop saying that because you know I'm going to keep doing it. <clears throat> and I don't know if my voice could survive that again. That uh, last note is a bit high. Well, actually, I think it's the first note is a bit high for me. Um. <laughs> Stop it. We got work to do. Okay. Um, so um, I remember the first time I saw our faves out on official royal duty. It was amazing. Do you guys remember they went to that radio station? I think it was in Brixton. Of course, they chose Brixton as their first stop. And I never forget when people were saying that um, they were, okay, okay. I remember one person in particular, she said, I was on my way home from work and I heard that uh, there was some royals in the neighborhood and all that kind of stuff. And when they found out that it was Megan and Harry, they just stopped everything. They were like, ah, I got to go over there so I could see them. So all those people were standing out there. And I think it was kind of a, a misty, kind of a rainy, drizzly night. And not only did they stay there when they went inside, but they also stayed there when they came out. They were still waiting. And you could tell that there was something very, very different about that royal couple. And not only could I tell and you could tell, but of course, uh, a lot of those stodgy old dullards in the royal family could tell, you know what? Do you know what? This is going to be a problem. She is way too popular. I mean, just look at the way she's dressed and look at how. You know, she just, it's a bit of humility there. Like she's very overwhelmed and yet very cool with the attention and everything. And I remember how she was like paying so much attention to the people that greeted them at the door that Harry had to say, hey, you got to wave to these people. And when she turned around and waved to them, they just a little hand gesture and they went nuts. But such is the power of Meghan Markle. And so now we find ourselves, if you fast forward all this time later, and by the way, they weren't married yet then, right? They were still uh, engaged. And that was the first time that any um, royal marrying, a, uh, actually anyone marrying a senior royal was able to do things like that, which I think also created a bit of jealousy. But the queen, the queen uh, bent a lot of rules uh, because, you know, Harry, Harry knew, I think the, the queen, I, it was just so obvious to the queen that she's the one. And even though, even though, uh, let me see, as recent as, what was it, yesterday? You had that big liar on TV, Dickie Arbiter, um, saying that um, I think they married too soon. Uh, 
if he would have said the honeymoon isn't over, that I would believe. But married too soon? Uh, <laughs> like I said, big liar. Got caught in that lie by those pranksters. I don't believe that most people realize that a lot of these interviews, if not most, nearly all, if it involves the British media, people are getting paid for their opinions. They're getting paid in most cases. It's not as though they're this, um, how do you say it, some, some good Samaritan who just wants to go out and set the record straight. There is some type of compensation there, right? Far more often than happens on U.S. television. As a matter of fact, uh, there has been a firm policy in place. Now, don't get me wrong. They're going to hook you up. Like if they bring you to New York and they want you to do one of those morning shows, oh, you're going to get a hotel. You're going to have some extra days, um, perhaps even a per diem so you can, you know, shop and eat and all that kind of stuff. Uh, like if you if you're doing ABC, you know, you might get some Disney tickets for something if they have like, say, Disney on ice in town or something like that or. They'll find some kind of way to make you feel special, uh, but not necessarily a payment. They're not going to, you know, go into your PayPal or something like that. So when you see that they have these interviews uh, in the UK or even for the tabloids, it is not unusual that people are being paid. And the more salacious the story the more money you can make. So that is one of the big differences in the way the media operates. Um, I mean, we've had some sleazy reporters in the U.S., and we do have tabloids, and a lot of the tabloid culture was actually imported from, guess where? The U.K. So, we, you know, we've had experience, but we don't really confuse the two. A tabloid is not a daily newspaper, and a daily newspaper is not a tabloid, unless Rupert Murdoch owns it, then it starts to slip. Uh, Leslie F. says, doesn't uh, that silhouette of... <laughs> oh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. And thank you so much for the uh, super chat. Uh, as a matter of fact... I wonder if she isn't part Yeti. You know what I mean? Because those Yetis, they have those beastly silhouettes. I mean, just beastly silhouettes. And um, I'm starting to think, I don't know why I love that photo of her that much. I just picture her after a day of plotting and scheming that she has to go and retreat back into her lair with a with a stiff drink. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> after swooping down on innocent uh, women and children and, and such uh, at some school in whatever shire, I just figured she has to, um, you know, go and, and retreat to a stiff drink or something like that. But... Um, <laughs> Yes, um, uh, Leslie, if I, I believe you're on to something there. So, yeah, I would say so. I, I think she um, she is part, um, let's see, where is it at here? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, separated at birth. You can hardly tell them apart. They're about the same age, aren't they? Separated at birth. You can barely tell them apart. Yeah. Very good observation. Good observation. Thank you so much for that. Um, okay, and thank you again for the super chat. A uh, super sticker. Hey, what's up, Sussex Squad? <laughs> hey, everybody. What's up, Sussex Squad? Okay, uh, let me see here. And oh, Elaine Parker, thank you so much for the 
super sticker. And thank you for watching Royal Sussex TCC Sun. I got to send you a picture. I told you I was going to send you a picture. I mean, I'm just about through, but I just got to put the finishing touches on everything. But I promise the picture is forthcoming as I sit here at my NASA-like command center. Oh, and thank you so much for being here tonight. Okay. Oh, boy, I had to catch myself. I was about to do it again. You see, now it's every time I kind of tilt my head, it just, I want to do it again, but I am i can't because I got stuff to do. <laughs> I got stuff to do. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. Okay. Uh, let me Let me continue here. So there we go. Now, uh, Christopher Bosey says some journalists also don't believe is Kate Middleton in the video, but will not go on the record yet. Did you hear that? And I have to say the fact that Christopher Bosey had been featured on the um, docuseries, the uh, Harry and Meghan, as well as so many other things that he has exposed I'm just going to say that he is one person that is definitely worth listening to. Oh, by the way, uh, I don't want to say the name, but Kay, thank you so much for the uh, super sticker. And I'm sorry, for the cash app. And thank you so much for watching. Hey, Sussex Squad. Uh, I'm sorry. Thank you so much for watching Sussex Squad. I, it just keeps slipping out. I can't stop doing it. <laughs> and I really have to because sometimes I send people's furry companions running under the bed or hiding in the back of the closet or something like that. Helen Groen, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Chantel Dixon, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Tash Mack, hello. Sharon Augustine. So, yes, um, I'm just going to say I trust uh, his judgment on these things because he hasn't really let us down yet. Now, of course, there was a thing about a thing a while ago, and some people kind of um, don't really, you know what I'm saying? But I think the initial shock of all of that is has subsided, but... Um, you know, we we're we're not um, we 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 weren't all hatched from the same egg, so we shouldn't agree on everything. But um, but still, very valuable to the cause. And um, also, and I am a subscriber to Spoutable. And um, if you haven't had a chance to go over there, make sure you do, because they're trying to create a platform that works a lot like the social media site formerly known as X, or I'm sorry, as Twitter, but um, without all of the baggage that, that Twitter has. And of course, all of the hate that you can find there. I've, I've heard people say that, oh, I, I can't go on Twitter. It's way too toxic. I understand. I understand. Um, I, I navigate it because... Uh, well, I, I, I'm able to navigate it because, I don't know, I just I have a, a thick skin for certain things. But there's there's even days when I, I'm going through my Twitter and I'm just like, oh, my God, did they have to do that? Especially when they're manipulating photos of our faves. Um, that is one thing. And, you know, when they manipulate a Sussex photo, you know what I do? I quickly go and edit the photo and replace it with the, um, you know, people of Kensington Palace. And then I put it right back on their timeline. That's usually what I do. I got a few of those that I've like, oh, you want to play, huh? <laughs> you you want to edit, huh? You want to edit? Don't make me edit. Because, you know, I will edit. So um, the initial photos that we saw was the one on the left side, 
That is because the story mentioned that they were there watching the kids playing sport. But then the actual film, which we found out was negotiated and the son won out for 140,000 pounds is the one you see on the right. The big problem with that is, though, you do understand that 140 pounds, that sounds so much like the type of money, and we're talking about adjusting for inflation, so 140,000 pounds is not what it was back in the 1990s, but that is the kind of money that they were paying for photos of Princess Diana. That is how far they have fallen. William has really let his wife down. And that is a bit of an understatement because we have, I'll just say our imaginations, our imaginations run wild with the idea of the ways William has not always been so kind to his wife. I'll just say it like that. That um, that his personality, his incandescent with rage uh, reputation, uh, that by itself would be enough. But the fact that this whole rollout of Kate's abdominal surgery is what led to this moment. And occasionally you will have the odd royal reporter, royal expert, royal Rhoda, you will have them say the same thing, that they have made a mess of it, an absolute mess of it. And the fact that people don't believe anything that they say is his responsibility. If he's the type of future monarch that he appears to be right now, They're in trouble. They're in trouble. By an accident of birth, he's in the position that he's in right now. There's, there's what, 66 million people in Britain? Surely there is someone more qualified. You know, when I hear people say, nah, well, at least we don't have a president. Well, you know what? Let Let me tell you the big difference between having an elected head of state. It is a gamble. But there's a child born today that a parent can look at and say, you know what, one of these days, he or she is going to be president of the United States. They don't have to go to the right schools. They don't have to be born into the right families. And yet somehow that child is able to work their way up lying and scheming and cheating like any good politician to get to the top. But at least it's available. At least it's available. In that system, pretty much whatever socioeconomic level you're born into, there's a good chance you'll never escape. You'll never escape. Now, Most places, most countries, that's pretty much the way it is for most families. However, through education, hard work, tenacity, you can be president of the United States, but you cannot, you will never, ever be the sovereign. You'll never, ever be the the monarch, the king or queen. That'll never happen for you. Only the next birth. And the next birth, the next heir, this heir, that heir. That's the difference in the system. And so you can vote out uh, Donald Trump, who people have compared his personality to William. But you can't vote William away. William will be there, and that's a fact. William will be there, and people will do things in his name to corrupt the system, to game the system. Just as it was done during the time of the transatlantic slave trade, made possible because it was done in the name of the Queen Elizabeth I. And every heir until slavery was abolished. That's the difference. 
You know how they say the pendulum swings both ways? Well, for the royal family, it always swings in their direction. Soft power or not, it is power. And it should never be underestimated. And they will never, ever be able to just vote him out. They'll be stuck with him. The same person that we've been talking about for the longest, that same person is a person who has allowed a price to be put on the image of his wife, 140000 to the same newspaper that he accepted money from. They were able to uh, pretty much buy him off to avoid any type of further action against him because of what? Phone hacking. Phone hacking. He, too, was a victim of phone hacking. But the very same uh, news groups that hacked his phone is the same news group that he has depended upon for his survival as a monarch, for the survival of the monarchy. He has entered into a bargain with the devil. You see there? You see the watermark? It says Sun. The Sun newspaper. Rupert Murdoch's son. And that's who he's depended upon for his future survival. Just like his father. Like father, like son. No pun intended. Icarus and Dadius? It really is that. Well, his father has gained wisdom, and as the, it goes in Greek mythology, the father tells the son, don't fly too close to the son, or your wings that are made of wax will melt, and you will fall to the ground, and that'll be the end of you. Well, right now, he is flying too close to the sun. It's amazing how so many of those... Uh, Greek mythological tales actually explains modern day events like this. The only thing is, <laughs> you could turn to the Bible and you can find parts of William's weekends in the Bible. I don't know, like Solomon Gaborah. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. But um, yeah, you can turn to the Bible and find some of those weekends of his. <laughs> oh, that's bad. That's bad. That's really bad. But <clears throat> allegedly. Okay, let me go to the next one. Um. One of the things that you cannot uh, avoid these days is talking about this lady right here. Uh, this is the nurse that worked at the hospital that took a call that she thought was Queen Elizabeth II. And instead, it was some pranksters from a radio station in Australia. And, well, this nurse uh, forwarded this phone call, I believe it was. She forwarded it. And that was, of course, at the good old London Hospital. Kate was there suffering from severe morning sickness, as she has been prone to uh, throughout all three of her pregnancies. And because of that, she was in hospital, as they say. And she um, got that phone call from Australia. It was one of those morning show pranks, and they thought it would be a lot of fun. And, um, well, anyway, it um, turned out to be quite embarrassing. She was so humiliated. And this mother of, I think it was three, and a wife, she decided that life wasn't worth living anymore. She decided to delete herself because of the humiliation that she suffered, having the world laughing at her. Um, and there you can see um, Sadaha, a mother of two, oh, his mother of two, 
was found dead and with cuts to her wrists at uh, the hospital uh, at the hospital nurses accommodations on the 7th of December 2012 three days after Sydney's two-day FM radio station made a 5.30 a.m. call, which she had transferred, believing it to be a call from the Queen. The conversation that the two DJs, Mel Craig and, uh, is it Craig? Mel Craig and Mike Christian, subsequently had with the second nurse about the Duchess's medical condition was broadcast by the station. And this is what's really going to shock you. There were lawyers that actually cleared it. Lawyers at the radio station actually signed off on that uh, phone call. Right? And one of the reasons why I'm sharing this with you is because you would think after something like that happens, that things would be so tight and so secure and so impenetrable at the London hospital or London clinic, if you will, that nothing like that, a security breach like that could never happen again. And that was a security breach. That was clearly a security breach. Passing on the phone call from one person to another, allowing that for even the ability to just call in from off the street while there is someone from the royal family there and there wasn't an intense screening is shocking. So why should we be surprised if someone was able to go and take a peek at those records like that? I guess we shouldn't be surprised, but Again, we should be surprised. And then, of course, the the poor family. You have to really feel for the family. Um, this is just a few articles that have been written about them over time, like a uh, sanctioning radio station over royal prank sent a clear signal, says ongoing media regulators. They always get busy after the fact. But then again, does anything ever really change? I don't think so because someone just paid 140,000 pounds for a photo of the Princess of Wales. Doesn't that sound eerily similar? Uh, son of royal prank called nurse tells of pride over university uh, place. And let's see, Australian radio station escapes license suspension for royal hospital prank call. Now, apparently, one of the DJs, I believe Mel is a female, um, suffers from PTSD to this very day. And I could believe that. I could believe that. You know, there not everybody can play a part in something like this and just walk away um, without it really affecting them. I would like to believe that's the case, so... Um, if you don't know about that story, I tell you, you really ought to look it up because uh, somebody really dropped the ball. And as for that, uh, the morning people there in Australia, that whatever show it was, that was absolutely disgusting. But it involved that hospital. A lot of very famous, a lot of wealthy and very important people have stayed at the London Clinic. And you would think they would have a protocol when it comes to these things. And I'm sure they have some system in place, but it really needs to be reexamined at this point. But that's only if you believe that it actually happened. There are some people of the opinion that no such security breach happened and that this may just be another ploy to get sympathy for the Princess of Wales. And why do we believe that's the case? Because they have lied and bared false witness before. You see how this really comes back to haunt you? Because they have lied before, because they have been misleading before, because of those fake photos, I can't trust anything that they say. So has there been a security breach? I mean, I've heard some doozies today. 
oh, William mentioned Russia when he spoke about Ukraine, and so Russia's out to get him. Are they? Are they really? Does William impress you as being a threat to, um, I don't know, one of the biggest military powers in the world? Does 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 William really make uh, Vladimir Putin flinch? I think not. I think not. You got the wrong one, boo. Joan Garcia says, Baron, uh, shows like The View and The Daily Shows, uh, Stephen Colbert, both late night, uh, Jimmy's, et cetera, are ripping it up about Kate's obvious doctored photos. Well, thank you very much for the super chat. And I'm so glad to hear that because I have not seen uh, most of those shows. I've only seen that one thing with Stephen Colbert mentioning the um, marching ban of chicanery or the marchioness of Chumley. <laughs> And I haven't seen any of the others, but um, I'm glad to know that they're still keeping the heat up. Thank you so much for your comment. Uh, let me take a look at uh, a few of these comments that have come in, because I can see this thing is uh, turning over fast. And uh, let me see. Oh, yeah. It, it's one that I cannot forget. Let's see. Yeah, even the White House has uh, had some fun with it. The White House, the King of um, the Netherlands, everybody's having fun with it. They kind of went after, uh, what's her name, um, Kim Kardashian, but I noticed they had nothing to say to the King of the Netherlands. I think he is flying low, is taking too long for the downfall. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, but where can he go? He's not allowed to fail because he'll be the king. He's the next king, so he's not allowed to fail. The only thing that happens is the people around him are the ones that are punished or they're the ones that uh, resign or take the fall, but it can never happen to him. Uh, this was such a senseless death. I always wonder why she thought it was necessary to do something so bad to herself. Um, yeah, you know, you really can't, um, you really can't know what a person is thinking at that point. But the important thing is that we don't do like, um, Jeremy Clarkson or, or, and doubt that person if they are asking for help, or we don't do like, um, hoghead Pierce Morgan and doubt someone when they're asking for help. That's the important thing is that, uh, when a person is, in trouble that we don't uh, judge, we take the word for it. Um, so yeah, so you know, if you ever find yourself struggling, it is very important that you reach out for help. It's important that you know that you're not alone. Um, never hesitate to reach out for help. Okay, Tash Max says, what's interesting is that KP didn't give the okay for the TMZ, Kate, or Carol Pap photo, but okayed the one with Will. They were both stage photos by KP. Uh, yeah, that is something that we have to keep reminding people because they are trying to bury under thing everything under this um, argument of, oh, they're bullying Kate. Um, what's the other one? Oh, it's another conspiracy theory. They're trying to, and, and believe me, after the Kennedy assassination, uh, the United States has become a very skeptical country. There's a lot of things. If you look at statistics before the Kennedy assassination and after the Kennedy assassination, when it comes to conspiracies, we don't just, you can't shame us out of our conspiracies. If we believe something to be true, we're going to keep digging and investigating until we're satisfied, until we've said enough, not when the tabloid media says enough, when we say it's enough. So let us all remember that William wanted to get the attention of the U.S., right? He wanted the American market. He wanted to 
to be the face of the royal family in the United States. He was so afraid that Harry was going to steal his thunder, and he wanted to be the only royal that people spoke about day after day. Well, be careful what you ask for, because it's here, it's in your face, and it ain't going nowhere. As they say, you have opened up a Pandora's box, and people are asking questions. People are are looking behind the curtain, and what they see is something very creepy and hostile-looking and petty and tepid and... Ugh! Ugh! Look at what's look look what's behind the curtain. Ugh. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Look at what's behind the curtain. That's why we're here, because that was behind the curtain, and now that we know what's behind the curtain, well, um, we can never unsee it. That's what I'm trying to say. Is now that we know what's behind that curtain, we can never ever unsee it. So that's why they say be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. Uh, you know what? I need to close some of these things I got open here before I make my computer freeze or something. Okay. That's better. I got 101 screens open. Okay. Better. Better. Uh, B. Martin says, Baron King Charles III got an Oprah interview tonight. Hmm. <laughs> you are getting right. <laughs> Did I miss something? Did I sleep through something? If that was true, if that was true, if that was true, I tell you, that would be some thrilling television. Thank you so much for the super chat. And Mystic Toxin says, let's not ruin tea, please. I can't afford the upcharge. Here, here. Thank you so much, Mystic Toxin. Okay. The marching band of chicanery. I loved when Stephen Colbert said that. The marching band of chicanery. Okay. All right. Let me let me continue here. So, all right. Now, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. If it doesn't, um, this is like the one thing that is still experimental. So the good thing is that we got the sound correct for today. But uh, playing the sound bite, I'm not sure about that. But let me see if this works. Um, by the way, this guy was hilarious. Let's see if I can get this. Oh, Loretta Johnson. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Okay. Walk and chew gum, walk and chew gum. Let me see if I can make this work. Thanks for joining me. Now, before we get started, just nod your head if the royal family is holding you against your will. I thought so. Guys, did the palace feel stupid putting out a fake AI image of Kate? I've always thought that was that was lunacy, really, as to why on earth we do that when we've got the technology nowadays to do things. Will TMZ caught you walking around with a fake princess? Were you worried that you guys were going to get caught? I have to admit, at first I was quite concerned, um, and so I was a little bit worried. Are you worried what happened to Princess Diana will happen to you guys if you step out of line? I mean, trauma comes in all sorts of shapes and forms, and we can never know or be prepared for when it's going to happen to us. Will and Kate, thanks for joining me. Now, before we get started, just nod your head. Okay, was that successful? Was that successful? Okay, Tash Mac is laughing. I think so. All right. So, yeah, now I know that works. <laughs> Thank goodness, because I was not sure that that was going to uh, work out the way I wanted it to. But, yes, um, this I guess this guy is a comedian. And um, he does like a lot of that stuff where he, you know, walks up to people on the street and all that. And, um, oh, thank you, Lydia. Um, 
Yeah, so he, um, I, I couldn't play the video, obviously, but when he asked him to shake your heads if you can, um, if you're being held against your will, and they were just sitting there like, you know, bobbing their heads like a couple of bobbleheads. Um, but yeah, I think this guy is from Australia. And I don't know if you guys know this, but there is a lot of people of Greek descent in Australia. There Again, there are a lot of people of Greek descent in Australia. And I'm wondering if he's one of those Aussie Greeks. Um, but I met uh, someone some time ago that was um, of Greek descent. And I'm just like, wow, I never knew there was so many Greek people in Australia. Uh, TCC Sun says, I believe this whole thing is going to be used to explain why she is no longer with us. They will say an embarrassment um, was too great. The, I'm sorry, the embarrassment was too great. They will pass the blame to the public. I really hope I'm wrong. Oh, TCC Sun, I see the way you stitched that together. I see the way you stitched that together. Oh my goodness. That that yeah. Oh whoa. <laughs> uh what was that song? Girl, you know you better watch out. <laughs> that thing, that thing, that thing. Yeah, she better watch out. Thank you so much, uh TCC son. And I am picking up what you are putting down. I am picking up what you're putting down. And as nightmarish as that sounds for her, um, oh boy, I hope it doesn't come to that. But um, <laughs> you got to run fast. You got to dunk. Uh, what is it? You got to run fast. You got to be smart. You got to be wiser. <laughs> Yep. 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 Oh man. But again, you all, we have been given a green light to let our imagines run our imaginations run away with us because we can't believe or trust anything they say. I repeat, we should never believe or trust anything that comes out of Kensington Palace because they have already uh, breached our trust on several occasions in ways that are, they just can't come back from that. So um, not our faults, not our faults, right? Remember that we have been given the green light to let our imaginations run wild. Uh, let me see. Oh, Serengeti. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, <laughs> you know what, though? You know what? We have, we've pretty much figured out exactly what they had planned for Megan. And but for the fact that Harry got them out of there, you know, uh, things would look a lot differently right now. But fortunately, they have been a step ahead. But we know how their family is. We know how they operate. Uh, we know about, what was it, George the fifth or the sixth or whichever one it was. They wanted to make sure that the news hit the newspapers at just the right time. Or how about um, the the Prince William that wanted to marry that uh, model and and suddenly the the plane went spinning out of control we know how they operate and of course the worst of the worst um a darkened streets of paris tunnel we know how they operate we know how they operate even uh what's his name um gosh uh the one that was on the daily show uh noah noah uh he even just came out and said it. <laughs> Trevor Noah just said what everybody else was thinking. So um, never underestimate 
Never underestimate. Ladarius Martin, thank you so much for being here. Yes, William of Gloucester. You're right, William of Gloucester. Thank you very much. Yep, poor William of Gloucester, which is too bad, too, because look at the Duke of Gloucester that we got now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, at least we would have had a hottie in there. Uh, but then again, all of that winds of blood, he would have turned. He would have turned. They always do. <laughs> they always do. Harry's only still looking good because of that Spencer blood. Uh, okay, so Buckingham Palace hiring a uh, for, for 25,000 pounds communication assistant as security continues uh, into royal handling. I'm sorry, not security, scrutiny. Can, <laughs> wait, as scrutiny continues into royal handling of Kate rumors. Uh, too little, too late. And also... 25,000 pounds, 25,000 pounds. They want a communications assistant for 25,000 pounds, which is code for put somebody young with tech skills to watch over somebody, or I'm sorry, to help someone older and stuck in their ways. Get someone young who has um, internet skills to help out some old dodgy person some sketchy old man who doesn't know exactly what uh, AI is and all that kind of stuff. That's what they're looking for. Um, it sounds like a good uh, thing to add to your resume or your CV. I, I worked for Buckingham Palace before, but I'm afraid it's not the type of person. They need someone from the military Someone who's not afraid to tell the truth, but a 25,000 pound a year uh, communication assistant is not going to cut it. They need a corporate CEO. They need someone with a reputation to come in there. Just like the presidents always pick a chief of staff who is going to tell them the truth. At least you hope they will. Usually you can tell if there's a good chief of staff. If there's not a good presidential chief of staff, they don't last that long. Or should I say if they're good, they don't last that long. If they're weak, then they'll stay there for the duration. But um, the chief of staff has a high rate of turnover because that's the person who tells the president, I, if I was you, I wouldn't do that. Well, there's no one to tell Charles or William if I were you, I wouldn't do that. But then again, if you were them, you would do that and wait for the Royal Rota to fix it. Um, there's actually someone that, uh, well, let me let me go to see what's let me see what the next one is before I mention that uh, person's name. Uh, oh, you know what? That's not coming up yet. So let me continue. Uh, well, <laughs> Benzola, they're not going to listen anyway. They never do. They never do. They're not going to listen to Royal Sussex and put someone like that in there. The reason why they have problems is because anybody that, sell, that says no to Charles doesn't last very long. Now, take a look here. Breaking the current editor of The Sun, Victoria Newton, has just been named in Prince Harry's high court case for allegedly unlawful information gathering. Victoria Newton just gave an interview asking the public to leave Prince Harry's brother's wife alone. You know, I saw her looking so desperate all over the airwaves, looking so desperate. No, she was on the Times Radio. That's the same place that uh, Dickie Arbiter was. Uh, but yeah, Victoria Newton, if you don't know who she is, I had to go and look in, in my um, receipts. 
although I know who she is, but I had to go and look at my receipts because I wanted to share a few things, a few visual aids that will help you. Um, this is Victoria Newton. She is the editor of The Sun. She gave the nod for the horrific piece written by Jeremy Clarkson to be published this morning. She appeared on the BBC Laura Kay uh, when I say influential woman enable misogyny, I ain't making it up. You get that? And very influential woman is the one who gave the green light to one of the worst articles that has ever been written about the Duchess of Sussex. That was a woman. Her name is Victoria Newton. She was the editor. She's the one who signed off on it. So when Jeremy Clarkson says, oh, dear, I've really stepped into it this time. Um, I find myself in a spot of bother. It was very erudite the way that he responded to his horrible uh, column. But the thing is, there was an editor, and her name is Victoria Newton who just signed off on it, who just casually signed off on it. And, and, and then it went into print. It didn't just go out online. It went into print. Uh, Carolita Simone, thank you so much for the super sticker, and thank you so much for being here. So uh, getting on with it here, the Sun apology doesn't mention Meghan Markle by name, says Dr. Shola. So the person it violently racialized and dehumanized doesn't receive front page apology for his Jeremy Clarkson column. He keeps column and Victoria Newton keeps job as editor. This is institutional gaslighting on an epic level. That was Dr. Shola. That was Dr. Shola's response. So the Sun apologizes for Jeremy Clarkson on Megan. I don't remember an apology at all. And really, the apology needed to start with the person who wrote it. The apology should have come directly from the editor that okayed it. How about that? Oh, wow. I love that name. Uh, ER, thank you so much for the PayPal. Thank you so much for that. And can you believe um, I grew up with a uh, one of the kids that lived close to me has that same first name. That's the first time I've seen that in a while. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, that, there you go. That's Victoria Newton. That is Victoria Newton, and as Madeline, Madeline Albright would say, women who don't help other women, there is a special place in hell for them. Well, Victoria Newton, <laughs> go to hell. <laughs> now, there, of course, is the column. I'm not going to bother with the words there because it was traumatic the first time around. YM Droid says most kids who can make a halfway viral TikTok wouldn't work for pay that low. No wonder they have the clown show that they do. They pay peanuts. Here, here. Here, here. They are so... I mean, I don't think the public would hold it against them if they gave a proper salary to the people that they hire. And you know what? There's someone else who's who agrees with that. I mean, I got a sound bite for you guys. This this gonna be a little tough for you to get through, but I feel like I need to share it and I will. So uh thank you, YM Joy. Sorry. I accidentally scrolled my way right out of the screen. <laughs> I 
I can't believe I did that, but I accidentally scrolled my way right out of the screen. I've gotten so used to that. If you slide across left or right, um, it's very sensitive. I got to figure out if it's a way to take away that sensitivity because that is a worry and I can't keep doing that. But, um, oh my goodness, now I got to bring my slides back up. Okay. That only takes a second though. Okay. And there we go. Disaster averted. I remember in the early days of Royal Sussex, that would have had me in complete meltdown and panic mode. But now I just quickly um, go right back into character. So again, thank you so much, uh, YM Droid. And Joan Lawman, thank you for the super sticker. And thank you so much for watching Royal Sussex and being a member of Royal Sussex. Greatly appreciate it. Okay. Oh, I got to scroll back to where I left off. Was it here? Nope. 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 Stop looking. There we go. There we go. So, yeah, that's where I left off. So, again, that was Victoria Newton. Okay. Jennifer Bradshaw says 25,000 pounds, and they are worth over $70 billion. Do that imperial family think they can take a pebble with them when they depart from this world? That does make you wonder. That really does make you wonder. I mean, I get the primogeniture. With the primogeniture, they're supposed to forward the estate intact, right? Um, that's the way the um, landed gentry have operated for centuries. So when the Earl Spencer died, Charles Spencer, his son, who is now the Earl Spencer, you inherit everything, lock, stock, and barrel. You get everything. Um, there is like you know, a certain amount of money set aside for the other children. But by and large, most things goes to the heir. And it's still the way they work today. So um, it has its merits. But what does it really do for the other children? Okay, uh, let me continue here. So this is Charles, um, King Charles III, when he was Prince Charles. Victoria Newton, I was with Charles on the last working day as Prince of Wales. He hosted me with typical generosity. Well, let me tell you what typical generosity is. The editor of the son, Victoria Newton, slept over in one of the royal residence, if I'm correct. I do believe that means that she was in Scotland, even though she's based in London. She was in Scotland with the king. You see, Charles routinely wines and dines and entertain uh, these royal reporters. They may find themselves staying at a royal residence as a weekend retreat. It is one of the things that comes with the job. So while I can't say with all assurance that she stayed there that night, I do believe that that was the case. That when, when she says he hosted me with typical generosity. See, for you and I, a party is an event that will happen that afternoon, that uh, evening, and then we go home. But for the aristocrats, the aristos, a party is an entire weekend. It could be an entire week. They will retreat to one of those country manor houses. And let's say if you go for a shooting or hunting, hunting party, it's not a one-day event. It lasts for days. With food, wine, 
And of course, lots of favors for the sovereign. And if you're wondering, what is that photo that she's showing him, right? Are you wondering what photo he looked at the day before uh, he became king? I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. It's that photo. That's the photo right there. That is the photo right there. Why? I don't know. But she was so proud to tell people that she spent the, his last day and probably night with the future king. There she was inhaling all that secondhand smoke from um, the future queen, consort, Camilla. And then the next day, Charles was king. This is all too cozy. It's all too disturbing. But remember, at least we don't have one of those presidents. I'm glad we don't have one of those presidents. Guess what happens with presidents? Remember uh, the Clintons and the Lincoln bedroom? When it comes to presidents, we actually call them out. We embarrass them. And if that's not enough, we vote them out. And if by some chance they get another four years, um, that's all they get is another four years. The reason why they keep saying that, the reason why they are so glad for a Donald Trump is because they use him as the poster child for what can go wrong if you have a president. And I get it. I get it. At the time when Donald Trump became president, I was like, you know, we got to look into this uh, monarchy thing. <laughs> we got to look into this monarchy thing. I get it. But like I said, you will never, ever be king. But technically, anyone born in the United States over the age of 35 uh, can be president. Well, there he is, Tom Gargamel Bauer. Uh, people have pointed out that Tom Bauer has a striking resemblance to that evil, mean, old man cartoon character, Gargamel. And if I had not pointed out that that was Gargamel, you probably wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> I am reasonably sure you wouldn't have noticed the difference, but I did point it out, you know, for effect. I did point it out. But, uh, yes, he is the embodiment of Gargamel. So, you guys, I know this is going to be tough, but I just want you to, to listen to this because, believe it or not, he and I have, have, have something in common. Some of the things that I had said some time ago, uh, he said the same thing. He said the same thing today. And I'm just pointing out to you that things have gotten so bad and are not likely to get any better because they are so short-sighted. They are so short-sighted in that um, system, in, in, the, in the monarchy. They are so short-sighted in that, um, si oh, wow, that sounds familiar. <laughs> well, hospital staff who allegedly tried to illegally access Princess Kate's medical records at the London Clinic Hospital, that was where she underwent abdominal surgery, they could face criminal prosecution. The attempted data breach comes as UK security forces suggest that Russian-funded trolls and bot accounts may be deliberately spreading conspiracy theories on platforms. Now, you see that they're trying to blame Russian trolls and such. None of that, trust me when I say this, none of that is true. None of that is true. The Russians are not after Kate Middleton. I repeat. The Russians are not after Kate Middleton. 
Um, <laughs> Such as X and TikTok. Footage obtained by The Sun earlier in the week showing the princess looking healthy and relaxed during a recent shopping trip has failed to quash wild speculation about her health. Well, joining me live is the author and royal uh, biographer, Tom Bauer. Tom, thank you for joining me today. Uh, we have seen footage of Princess Kate out and about at a kind of garden centre in Windsor. What more proof do people need? This must be shocking and surprising to you as someone who's followed the royal family for such a long time to actually see well, the, these crazy conspiracy theories. Well, cr crazy conspiracy theories even perpetuated by a BBC reporter. I mean, that's how mad the whole thing has become. Uh, there seems to be a feeding frenzy, which unfortunately, uh, Kensington Palace and Buckingham Palace have not suffocated. They haven't put it down. And so I the BBC reporter entirely. did take that did take that information off off their Twitter. But at the same time, this is this is everywhere, isn't it? Anywhere you go online, in every timeline, including mine, there are all sorts of conspiracy theories. Even though we've seen her alive and well, Tom. I agree, but I mean, they may have taken it down. But the truth is, how could a BBC reporter actually perpetuate that sort of falsehood? I mean, it's just beyond belief. Um, what has happened. The news management is really appalling at the moment. Uh, and I blame the palace for that entirely. I don't think it was very wise of Kate and William to go to that shop on Saturday morning without a lot of pre-preparation. Mm. It was silly to actually allow just a member of the public, so to speak, spot them. That was just very bad news management. Because but that was I mean, always going to be problem. grainy, Tom. That was always, it was not going to be a sort of official thing. But then I suppose if they had had an official thing and they called a camera crew or a photographer to be there, they may have been criticised for that as well. Can they do anything right at the... You see that? You see that? The fact that they went to that garden centre, that only made things worse. They put a picture, or should I say they release a picture of someone in the back of the car with their head turned, that made everything worse. And of course, even the one that they did not authorize of Kate and her mother, that was also pretty bad. I mean, they just, they, they cannot seem to get this right. And, okay, well, I, I'm going to get to the part where Tom and I were are in agreement. At the moment, now the the trust has been breached in regard to the the photograph that came out on Mother's Day. Well, I think they could be. I mean, they shouldn't go out. They should stick to the original plan, which was that she would be available after Easter. The real problem is they keep the palace keeps on changing the agenda. Although I do think the Welleses keep changing the agenda too. It's all just out of control, and the only way to stop it, the only way to control it is to make sure to get William in a 12-step program. Don't appear in public until it's very carefully orchestrated. And as for all the trolls and the rest, this is all a feeding frenzy because, again, uh, it's been so badly managed. Uh, this is a woman who clearly, even from the photograph on Saturday, is not looking terribly well and needs time to recover. And She okay. Did you all see her sprint to the car? Did you all see her sprint to the car? She's okay. If only there was a spokesman in Kensington Palace or Buckingham Palace to make that clear, it would be so much better. If only there was a spokesman at Kensington Palace or Buckingham Palace. Well, they're, they're hiring uh, someone to, to work in communications. But the thing is, you know who their spokesmen are? The spokesman is the Royal Rota. They're not going to change that system. Rebecca English, Victoria Newton, um, Jeannie Bond, there is a whole collection of spokespeople. And I said the other day, I said it a week ago, I said it a month ago, that you know how they say, oh, at least we don't have a president. You know what a president has? A presidential spokesperson, a one single person who speaks to the press. They have a whole gang of people that they flood the airways to speak to everybody. And you know what? Even with that, they're 
losing ground. They are losing. They are falling short, even though they got Lottie Dottie and everybody speaking for them at the same time. They blanket the air ray, the airways. And you know, they would love to get some of those royal reporters on American TV. They, or should I say they would love to get more of them on American TV, but right now they just can't. Unfortunately, uh, this has all got out, out of control. And I do believe that there is a sort of feeding frenzy, which is part of the reason why in the London Clinic, allegedly, somebody tried to get her records because they could get a lot of money for it. Now, they are blaming conspiracy theories for their records. Um, the thing is, is it the conspiracy theories? Is it Russia? Um, is it uh, is it who else? It <laughs> is it Camilla? Who's after her records? And what are they going to do with it? We're not even sure she was at the hospital. We have no proof and no evidence that she was ever in the hospital. Anastasia says, speaking of Russia, how long will Putin stay in power? I plan to visit the country once he leaves permanently and in hell. <laughs> well, you know what, Anastasia, you and I have that in common. I've always wanted to go to St. Petersburg and Moscow, but for now, I don't think I can. But um, We'll have to talk about that one of these days because I've always wanted to go there. People will capitalize financially on this story. Again, it's most regrettable. But I do blame the palace for letting this happen. You're one of the top investigative journalists. Now, see, I said, I said over and over again, you guys, I said it tonight. It is not our fault. It's their fault because they are the ones who have totally blown it. How do you have all of the media access in the world and still you have lost the message? They have literally lost the message. It hasn't got anything to do with Harry or Megan. It has nothing to do with the Sussex squad. You know, we have been in it for a long time, but they have brought nighttime comedians um, heads of state, Kim Kardashian, whatever the heck she is, they are the ones who brought all of these outside interests into uh, the conversation. It wasn't us. The country, Tom, and you will know the length sometimes people go to, although I'm sure you never have, to pay money to get things like those medical records. Where is that likely to have come from? Because we hear all these theories about Russia, about other state actors and all of this. You know what they better be careful of? Oh, you know what? Now that one I'm going to keep to myself. But the last time we heard about somebody illegally retrieving medical records, we all know who was uh, guilty of that. We all know who was guilty of stealing medical records. And that's all I'll say about that. Would that likely have been something to do with the country, do you think? Or do you think I would have been just a newspaper or, or media organization? No, I think if it did happen in the London Clinic, it was just one individual who saw a, a case of as a source of easy money. Uh, I mean, there are always these sort of people in institutions who are greedy and unscrupulous. And it's the management's task to make sure they're quickly spotted and kicked out. Uh, it, of course, it's a hugely damaging to the London Clinic uh, because this is a terrible thing to have happened, if it did happen. But it is awful. But I do think Russia and the trolls there will be fueling this speculation. I'm oh, my God. Russia, they are really trying to sell people on this idea that Russia is after Kate Middleton's records. Do you think that some Russian uh, operative is going to try to sell uh, records that may not even exist? There's not going to be much there. I can guarantee you that. There's not much there. One of the great assets Britain does have is its royal family. 
and Russia is now an enemy because of the Ukraine war. And they can see quite easily a rich picking field to file lots and lots of damaging stories to undermine the world's confidence in our royal family. <laughs> Russia is going to steal Kate Middleton's records to undermine the confidence in the British royal... The, wait, wait, wait. To undermine the confidence that the world has in the British royal family. Confidence for what, Tom? Confidence for what? For for waving? Confidence for cutting ribbons? Confidence for pulling back a little drape to show a placard? Is that what the world is in risk of losing? We won't have anybody to teach us how to uh, fly in a helicopter as though we're taking an Uber? Is that what we're going to miss? I don't get this. I don't get it. That right there, you... <laughs> and the royal palaces should have been aware of that danger and made sure that it was instantly nipped in the bud, but unfortunately they didn't. Well, on that and point, Tom... But problem we, nowadays. On that point, Tom, we've seen William has mentioned Ukraine and presumably made himself a target for the Russian government on that. We've seen a lot of changes in how the royal family has been dealing not just with political issues, live political issues, but also in terms of its PR management and so on. We have this sort of weird, to me anyway, and you're the expert, a sort of half in, half out kind of idea where we're given some information about their health, but not all information about their health. Can this situation continue? And who's to blame for it? You say there are lots of problems, but is it the PR machine? Is it the wheels as themselves? What do you think? Well, I do think it's the palace's officials, but who appoints them in the first place is the real problem. King Charles, when he was Prince of Wales, was notorious for only employing people who said yes to him. And if someone said no, they were instantly fired. I fear that uh, William, the Prince of Wales, is, is copying his father. And together, neither of them are actually making sure that they have wise, experienced men at the centre strategizing how to cope with this problem. It got off to a good start and then went pretty bad. I mean, the, the public, of course, was... It got off to a good start and it went pretty bad. And it did. It did. It got off to a very good start, and then it was downhill from there. It's sympathetic to both William and Kate, and of course King Charles, for their illnesses. And they're very popular. Uh, but unfortunately, it has now gone a bit sour. Of course, it can be rescued. But I, at the moment, I don't have much confidence that there's anyone in either palace who has the ability and more importantly, the trust of the King and Prince William to actually get a grip of it. That is the problem. It, seem, it seems to just be floating around rather yeah, yes. than... Yes, how, how can painting. it be rescued, Tom, just briefly? Well, it can be rescued just by having a proper strategy. Someone should come out who is a named spokesman and say, this is the situation. I am speaking on behalf of the King and Prince, uh, Princess, uh, Prince of Wales and the Princess Kate. And this is what's happened. And I now ask you to go away and believe both are alive and recovering in one way or another. And there's nothing more to be said till after Easter. And that would do the trick. It's just everything is always anonymous. Mm. It's fed out through these royal correspondents or not fed out. And there's nudges and winks. And it's just a ridiculous way of communicating with the public. They need to be real. Tom, thank you very much indeed. You see what I'm saying? That's just what I said. They got all of these royal reporters. They think they win the day because they have all these people on talk TV and GB News and Good Morning Britain and uh, Ressa Mayas and all those people. Uh, they have the uh, loose women. They have all of this and still they're missing the target. Just like a poor marksman, they miss the target. B. Martin says, Baron, you know they are done messed up, right? Royally. Absolutely, B. Martin. They have lost the message. And that's what Harry said, that the biggest thing they fear is losing the message. And they have lost the message. 
Uh, Blue Draws, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you for watching Royal Sussex and being a member of Royal Sussex. YM Droid says they better be careful going down that road. Russia might actually have a real video of what happened, likely involving some pool pork. <laughs> Okay, okay, do not let Russia pull out that pulled pork sandwich video, and I'm sure they have one. You know, they could hack into just about anything. Yep, let them pull out that pulled pork. Uh, let's see, God, that sounds weird. VS says they are more worried about medical records being hacked than the security surrounding the records, but not providing security to Harry and family they can shag off. Thank you so much, B.S. Royally. I agree with you 100. I agree with you 100. Uh, let's see. So they are afraid to have a taste of their own bitter sour meds. And we are supposed to care. Tone deaf gaslighting hypocrites. Yeah. Yeah. They are in panic mode, y'all. They are in panic mode. Amber Rowan says, I'm not even sure anybody tried to look at her medical records. Where's Kate? Proof of life. And now uh, produce the person who did it. I don't believe it. Here, here. Thank you, Amber. Um, and I agree. I agree. This may be another attempt to garner sympathy for Kate. This is, this sounds this slaps of sympathy for Kate. That's what it is. Everybody's picking on Kate. And the thing is, the more you try to call people out, the more people are going to come after her. That's what's going to happen, is that they're pushing Kate down people's throats, right? And people don't care enough about one of the most privileged um, protected members of society. That's a tough sell. Just like when they were trying to sell everybody on the fact that, they, oh, they're in the hospital. Kate's in the hospital. Kate wants her privacy. There's a lot of people who cannot get a hospital appointment. And in modern day Britain, there are people who need surgery that need to see a doctor. They need tests and they can't get it. But then they're flaunting the fact that Kate and Charles were able to just walk into a hospital because they work so hard their entire lives. I'm being sarcastic, of course. Thank you for your comment. Uh, Lorna Williams, uh, 23 months membership. Come on. Baron, the royal family had the message they were an oddity and that we watched very uh, uh, once in a while for a pageantry, for the pageantry. That's it. That's it. They're a curiosity. They are a curiosity. And a curiosity belongs on the shelf. That's where they belong. Once you start taking those curiosities off the shelf and you examine them closely, then you realize, oh, this is not exactly what I thought it was. And right now, they are inviting people to take a closer look. And that's not good for them. But you know what? Let them keep it up. Let them keep it up. Thank you so much for 23 months membership. Okay. Now, uh, photographer Chris Allerton strenuously denied uh, to the Daily Fail that Prince Archie's christening photo had been manipulated other than minimal toning, a tuning that is, to its tone and exposure, telling them load of cobbler by uh, the mail confirmed the photo shows no sign of discrepancies. <sighs> They want so desperately to pull the Sussexes into this. They want so desperately. And most likely, this photograph was paid for by the royal family. 
I'm pretty sure they paid for it. This is false and made up story by the Daily Mail. Getty have not said this. Please stick to journalism rather than salacious nonsense. The official photograph from the christening of Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor, Prince Archie, um, Windsor, United Kingdom, July 6th, blah, 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 blah. So uh, the Daily Mail is doing it again. They're just making up stuff. They're just making up stuff. Isn't that the same thing that they did to Misan? Isn't that the exact same thing that they did to Misan? And Misan Harriman was on top of it, y'all. Statement made, please leave Allerton, Chris Allerton alone. Uh, Chris Archie christening photo correction issue after agency said snap was edited. Um, Getty Images has said the editor's note has now been removed from the royal photograph after no issues, issues were found, as they say in the UK, issues, no issues were found. There were no issues. Uh, and I think this was from earlier um, in the day. I've just spoken to Chris Allerton. Getty Images should never have put that editor's note on his image. I am sure Getty Images will make a statement about this in due course. More importantly, the newspapers should have spoken to him before publishing what has now become a global non-story about his work. He's a great photographer who doesn't deserve any of this. Please leave this man alone. Please leave this man alone. And once again, the British tabloid media is trying to go to war with a child. Somehow, <clears throat> they have found another way to bring Archie into a story. There's all these other photos, you know, like the engagement photos or something like that. But they take that one because it involves Archie. And they're going to go after all these other photos. And, of course, we all heard Richard Eden say, oh, I would love to take a, a look at some of those Sussex photos. The Sussexes rarely, rarely submit photos, rarely. Most of the photos of the Sussexes come from professional photographers. When the Sussexes submit a photo, it is a professional photographer. I cannot think of any photos, aside from what we've seen in the docuseries, I can't think of any photos that they themselves have taken. I can't think of any. But I tell you what, the Sussexes was so far ahead of the curve because they rarely submit photos. So there's not much to talk about. But Kate, who's supposed to be some gifted, um, what do you call it, child prodigy photographer, oh, she's snapping pictures all the time. And we know how that's worked out. <laughs> Kate takes photos or edits photos the same way Frankenstein created a monster, one body part at a time. I, can, I never thought I would have to say that I think that Kate Middleton has more in common with Frankenstein than most people, but it's true. Kate Middleton has a lot in common with Frankenstein because Frankenstein also sourced body parts. <laughs> Frankenstein also sourced body parts to, um, you know, to create um, a, 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 a image or whatever. So, <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> K 
Kate's like the Rocky Horror Picture Show, but real pictures, really. So all of this started because they were trying. This is what's so funny about it. Remember, it's almost hard to remember where this started. But remember, this all started because they were trying to hurry up and rush a photo out there because they thought Megan was getting too much attention with the South by Southwest. So Mother Day come along, and rather than just finding some old photo, they found old photos, photos rather, and they took all those old photos and they started stringing and piecing and stitching them together until they came up with something of a Frankenstein photo. <laughs> Yes, that piano thing was fake too. Yes, that fake pia the 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 Phantom of Westminster Abbey, that was also fake. Anytime you edit a photo and you're singing, the knee bone is connected to the thigh bone. The thigh bone is connected to the hip bone. The hip bone is connected to the neck bone. <laughs> that's the way Kate Middleton that's the way she edits photos she sits there and singing the, the, the toe bone is connected to the foot bone the finger bone is connected to the eye socket <laughs> You know what I'm saying? The shin bone is connected to the hip bone. The hip bone is connected to the shoulder bone. <laughs> oh. Anytime you're singing that song and editing photos at the same time, there's nothing that's going to go right about that. I'm just saying, if you've ever found yourself in that position where you're just stitching body parts together, adding, uh, you know, it's bad enough that she wears hair extensions, but she even put some hair extensions on the Tyndall girl. You know that? She did. She put some hair extensions on the Tyndall girl. She put a second skirt on the queen, hair extensions on the Tyndall girl, and she always chopping off Louie's fingers. <laughs> Ever since Louie stuck his hand in her face, she forever cropping his fingers out the photo. So. <laughs> ah! Ah! But yeah, she, uh, She's a she's a a, a, a real um, surgeon, isn't she? She just stitched stuff together. Don't matter that it don't belong together. That ain't never stop her. <laughs> oh man! So yeah, you know what? I can't wait till she feels better. Come on back, Kate. I need material. Come on back. Come on back, Kate. I need some new material. And you never, ever disappoint. Yep, I need some new material. I need uh, Kitty to come back. Yeah, so if you're listening, Kate, get better fast here and start editing them photos again so we can have something to talk about. Look at there. The the hand bone is connected to the shoulder bone. The shoulder bone is connected to the ear bone. <laughs> the couch bone is connected to the hand bone. The hand bone is connected to the table bone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, the tendos are connected to the Wessexes. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm surprised she didn't put Philip in there. I mean, yeah, I know he had passed away at that point, but that ain't never stop her. I'm surprised she hadn't put Philip in there. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I tell you, Kate, 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 always good for a laugh. I mean, she was just, 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 it's like she just took a bunch of, like she trimmed little body part pieces out of a photo and put them in a hat and shook them up and just started picking them out and sticking them. NC, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you so much for watching Royal Sussex. Uh-huh. Yes, it's true. Um, little Louie actually uh, did a little pistol whipping on her. And ever since that happened, she started uh, uh, deleting his fingers. <laughs> he had stuck his hand in her face and everything. And ever since that time, she started deleting them fingers. Thank you so much, B. Martim. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, well, that's the royal family for you. It's like a soap opera. And thanks to William and Kensington Palace, it is the laughing stock of America. They want America's attention. You got it. Be careful what you ask for. Right? Ain't that what Barbara Walters say? Be, be well for what you ask for. Okay, so take a look here. <clears throat> These are some of those Chris Allerton photos. Like right here, you can see Chris Allerton took some of the last photos of Meghan as a senior working royal. And over here on the right side, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, photographer, denies altering Archie's christening portrait. And, uh, of course, this also, uh, as you can see, Chris Allerton took the beautiful family portrait in 2019. And I believe that is also a Chris Allerton photo. So, um, yeah, they they need to um, they need to lay off this guy. He ain't done nothing wrong. Oh, was it George? Uh, really? I thought that was Louis. Was that George? I guess it was. Wow, the whole fi family is prone to violence. <laughs> Uh, Judy uh, Bazil, uh, Bazil says, first it was said William took the photo. The next thing they made Kate take the fall for the crap they're doing. Uh, I do not think Kate did anything. It's all the firm's doing. I believe that too, Judy. I don't think Kate had anything to do with that photo. I do not believe she had anything to do with that photo. I think that photo was kind of rushed out. And um, in all likelihood, it was probably William. <laughs> this live seems uh, that you had joined William in a glass of whiskey. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit lively tonight, isn't it? I'm having a good time. Now, um, one of the squaddies said, that we should make sure that they address some of this. As you know, uh, nice try, Daily Mail. There is an altered photo of Megan there at the top. And over here on the right side is another one. You can see um, Megan is wearing those uh, red earrings, right? But over here on the right side, there is no red ear earring because that is not the right photo. They um, edited that. And yes, that photo has wound up in the newspaper. So picture on right is fake. No earrings and black spots, a black spot on uh, nose and mouth. 
meaning, of course, you cannot see Megan's freckles. And right there, it says, look at this photo. They tried to say they argued that night. They tried to say they argued that night. We all know that there was no argument. There was no argument. There has never, ever been any... As a matter of fact, if they argued that night, why is there just one photo? Why is there just one photo? They had a complete bank of cameras outside. And you mean to tell me only one photographer managed to catch them quarreling? And on several occasions, they have used those two photos to try and humiliate our Duchess. So if they're going to look into photos, these are the ones they should look into because these have been used several times in the tabloid articles. So fix that. And over here, uh, tabloids falsely accuse Harry and Meghan of manipulating images like Kate Middleton did. <laughs> I love the way they say that. Tabloids falsely accuse Harry and Meghan of manipulating photos like Kate Middleton did. <laughs> she is going to be notorious as she who has created fake photos. Y'all know that, right? Anytime somebody does not trust what they're seeing, they're going to be like, oh, they didn't done a Kate Middleton. Yes, as a matter of fact, that is going to be the words that they use. Uh-huh, you just pulled a Kate Middleton. What's wrong with this photo? It looked like somebody just pulled a Kate Middleton. <laughs> Oh, uh, let me see. After trust in Kensington Palace was undermined due to a photo manipulation scandal being attributed to Kate Middleton's tabloids tried to drag Prince Harry and Meghan into the mess with false allegations against professional photographers. Uh, and then there it says it's been in an embarrassing few months for the Prince and Princess of Wales, Kensington Palace uh, culminate, uh, culminating in being deemed no longer trustworthy, uh, no longer a trustworthy source and likened to North Korea and Iran. You know, guys, this is huge. This is huge. Do you all remember when what was it, a week ago? When that photo was first pointed out as being fake. And I saw what they were talking about. I said, you guys, this is really bad. This is really bad. I had no idea how bad. I didn't know that we would still be talking about it all this time later. But because of that photo, the viewership for Royal Sussex has gone up. The viewership for all of the Sussex friendly spaces have gone up because of that photo. Remember, Kate never puts a foot wrong. Uh, Judy Bazil, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you so much for watching Royal Sussex. Okay. Boy, I tell you, if they put Kate's brain in a bird, it would fly backwards. Not too bright. Not too bright. Although, I do agree that Kate had nothing to do with that photo. I'm not even going to put that on Kate. I think that was William trying to be clever. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Still missing. Well, see there? Not everybody believes she's been found because... Uh, congratulations, Kate has made it to the milk cartons. Missing. Have you seen me? <laughs> uh, no, I haven't seen you, but I've seen your work. 
I've seen you work. Uh, <laughs> I'm happy, though. I'm happy. You know, this is how life goes. You have managed to build up some type of reputation and her reputation was built upon lies against Megan. Remember those articles? Is there anything Kate can't do? Remember that? Uh, edit photos? Right? The one thing that she's supposed to be good at. Uh, so next time they say, is there anything that Kate can't do? Uh, yeah, the one thing she's supposed to be good at, photos. Yep, photos. That's why I say she's not too bright. If you put her uh, brain in a bird, it would fly backwards. It would just fly backwards. Yeah, after you do the transplant, face the bird away from the window because when the bird take off, it's going to go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and William, um, same thing. You put his brain in the bird, and it'll probably uh, suffer uh, from, what is it, uh, alcohol poisoning? <laughs> Allegedly. But yeah, the bird would probably get alcohol poisoning. As a matter of fact, they would probably say William is not a viable donor. Because even the bird's brain is not that small. <laughs> oh, let me see. The credit score from the three agencies is 450. No car loan. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, B. Martim. Yes, subpar credit. Um. I told you guys, Celebitchy, if you guys have not seen Celebitchy's website, Celebitchy sources out some of the, my favorite photos of Kate. And um, these, they usually, see, this is what happens. Celebitchy, they don't edit the photos. These are unedited. These are unedited. Most people that buy those photos from Getty, um, like the Daily Mail, the Sun, they edit the photos. They airbrush. They do all kind of little stunts with the photos. But Celebitchy, they buy their photos for their because they're you know proper uh, writers and they have a, a news blog and and website and everything. So they actually purchase the photos to share. And when they purchase the photos, of course, they're not going to airbrush them. So that is 100% unedited Kate. So one thing about their website is that they are very honest brokers. They do not edit photos. So whenever you uh, look at an article over there, trust me, what you see is what you get. And that includes Camilla. What you see is what you get. Now, uh, let's go on to Rupert Murdoch. Prince Harry's lawyer implicates Rupert Murdoch in cover-up of unlawful snooping by his tabloid. Prince Harry's lawyer leveled explosive new allegations Wednesday that Rupert Murdoch was aware of cover-ups at the British tabloids, uh, at his British tabloid, that used unlawful techniques to spy on the Duke of Sussex and others. That includes William, who cheerfully accepted that payoff from the Sun. Um, attorney David Sherborne said Murdoch was among the executives who were aware that the public statements made about phone hacking and other unlawful information gathering at the news group newspaper were untrue. Harry and other claimants, including actor Hugh Grant, sought 
uh, during the first of the three-day hearing in the high court and, uh, to amend their lawsuit against the publisher to include allegations that executives were part of an effort to conceal and destroy evidence of wrongdoing. Now, they went on a massive, massive destruction of records. They wanted to rid themselves of anything that would collaborate the fact that they were involved in phone hacking, among other things. And as I said before, uh, I believe it was, was it the News of the World or one of those tabloids? One of those tabloids actually got medical records because one of the actors uh, that was struggling with some, oh, let's say women's health issues, uh, she found out that she was what she was. I don't want to say because that's her business, but anyway, um, she had to make some decisions. And gosh, I hate talking about this because she went through hell. And I feel like even talking about it is doing harm to her. But the unlikely event that she would ever tune into <clears throat> Royal Sussex. But the thing is, it was a very personal choice that some women have to make. And yet one of the tabloids, not necessarily Rupert Murdoch's, but I'm just going to say one of the tabloids, was able to get her medical records. And also, even when people changed the pen that came with their cell phones, they found a way around that by hacking into the, well, by getting someone at the phone company to override your attempts at privacy. So this guy, his money, and now there's the accusation that he very well knew that these things were taking place. Bought and paid for by his news group and others. Phone hacking. As an American, it is very difficult for me to understand how something like that could happen. And practically nobody has gone to jail. Just a handful of people have ever gotten in trouble. So David, uh, whatever his name is, says, now for the first time, Rupert Murdoch alleged by Harry's attorney to have personally have had uh, knowledge of hacking scandals since 2009 and subsequent cover-up. And so Byline Investigates is posting updates on court proceedings. As you see, Rupert Murdoch named as the first, for the first time in the 20-year-long phone, phone hacking uh, litigation against his newspaper, The Sun, and the News of the World for allegedly knowing about criminality since at least 2009 and allegedly covering it up. This is huge because usually people are so afraid of Rupert Murdoch. So right there, David Sherborne, uh, for a claimant, has told the court that news international bosses allegedly set out to disrupt MPs who were calling for an investigation into phone hacking scandal. David Sherborne, he ain't scared of nobody. And right there, News of the World publisher gave false evidence over missing Rebecca Brooks' hard drive, claimant says. There are 45 separate claims ongoing against news group newspapers. You see there? Newly appointed uh, chief executive officer at the Washington Post, Sir William John Lewis, has been named in court for allegedly covering up phone hacking for his former employer, Rupert Murdoch. Now, um, this William Lewis, William John Lewis person, or just William Lewis, he used to work for Rupert Murdoch, and now he works for the Washington Post. 
not to be confused with the New York Post. Washington Post is owned by Jeff Bezos. He purchased the Washington Post. Uh, the Washington Post has had a very long history in uh, journal in, in in news newspaper history, and um, Rupert Murdoch has done everything he could to buy some of the most prestigious newspapers around the country. Um, well, at least he's tried. And right there, you can see uh, News Washington. Uh, yeah, New Washington Post CEO accused of Murdoch tabloid hacking cover up. So anyway, he's been called out too. He's going to be in trouble. And as you can see there, there is Willie Leakes. Willie Leakes, who seems to depend <clears throat> on Rupert Murdoch, among others, for favors. They, um, they kind of own him, just like the Daily Mail and Camilla and Charles. Camilla and Charles actually hired a couple of people from the Daily Mail to take over some of their communication duty. Uh, it's a revolving door. And all of this Royal Rota stuff really started because of Charles and Camilla. That's where it started. The queen has never had a relationship with the Royal Rota. But the Royal Rota was designed to limit access. And Rebecca um, English is the gatekeeper. She's the one that decides who goes where when it comes to accompanying the royal family. She has her favorites, but she is the one who may or may not have been chosen by the reporters or may or may not, but most likely chosen by the royal family. Right? And Rebecca English is somebody that Harry used to hang out with when he would go on these things. This is what amazes me is that all of these people, they have watched Harry grow up. They have grown older as adults with Harry while covering the royal family. And yet, and yet Harry, who has been so kind and so thoughtful to most of these people, all things considered, they do not mind destroying not only him, but his wife and his children. They're trying to destroy the entire Sussex family. And William and Charles are both in the bed with these people. They are in the bed with the tabloid media. And it's been that way for a long time. And it's going to continue to be that way even when Charles is gone. And I'm pretty sure as soon as they can get their hooks into George, uh, it will continue. Because the royal family has taken on the media almost as a co-equal partner. It's as though they're co-equal partners. And now that they've let the genie out of the bottle, they won't be able to put it back. They won't be able to put it back. Because now the royal family is bought and paid for. Take a look there. There's Rupert Murdoch. There's Jeremy Clarkson. Hoghead Pierce Morgan. And of course, Pierce Morgan, Jeremy Clarkson, had that nice Christmas luncheon with Camilla. And it was after that luncheon that Jeremy Clarkson decided to write that article uh, saying all of those nasty, horrible things about Megan. Very close relationship they have. Very close relationship. Alarmingly close. I'm not sure if Gen Z have educated themselves about this, but as an older millennial, it's my job to pass down wisdom. The craziest development in recent royal history is that Prince William used to be the hot one. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then his mom from heaven saw how he was becoming his father and snatched that hairline right back. Yes, that is shocking. But Willie Leakes was supposed to be the hot one. Not necessarily the most lovable, but he was supposed to be the hot one. But look at him now. Look at Willie Neeks, Willie, Willie Neeks, Willie Leeks now. Take a look at him. Diana then reached down from heaven and snatched him ball, snatched his looks away from him. And now he's just the old chip off the Windsor. He is. He's just a chip off the old Windsor. It serves him well, though, doesn't it? It's what he deserves. He de he deserves it. It's what he deserves. <laughs> uh, you know, if you call your mom paranoid, aren't you asking for it? As a matter of fact, you guys, if... It, oh, well, I hate to say it, but when Diana looks down from heaven and she looks down at Williams, this is what, he's, what she sees. When Diana looks down from heaven at William, this is what she sees. Yep, that's what she sees as she looks down uh, from heaven and she saw William. This is what she saw. She snatched him ball. Yep. The only thing that's left is the incredible edible egg. <laughs> Take that, Willie Leakes. Now, um, uh oh, there we go. Um, you guys, this is gonna have to stop. <clears throat> This is really going to have to stop. Now, you all know, you've heard of the Elgin, the Elgin Marbles, right? The Elgin Marbles. Um, that is, of course, some of the friezes that once adorned the Parthenon. Well, doggone it, if the British Museum is not at it again, I don't know if I need to call Greece and tell them, hey, if I was you, I would go take a look at, uh, what is it, Mount Vesuvius? What do they call that? No, it's not Vesuvius. What do they call that place where the Parthenon, well, is it the Parthenon? That little mountain, that hill? They need to go and take a look out their window because I think the uh, British Museum might be taking some more of their stuff. <laughs> I think the British Museum might be taking some more of their stuff. So if you all know how to get in touch with the government of Greece, uh, try to see if you can uh, warn them that um, some workers from the British Museum, the Acropolis, thank you, Lorna Williams. Yeah, tell them to look out at the Acropolis because I think somebody's about to rip them off. They probably already over at the airport or, or at the dock or whatever. But... Um, yeah, the British Museum, they 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 have ripped everybody off. They got the Benin bronzes, they got the Rosetta Stone, they got all kinds of stuff. And now they're trying to get the rest of the Acropolis. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's fun, ain't it? <clears throat> okay, okay. And also, you guys, remember, uh, according to Cloud Nugget, if that wasn't Kate, and I don't believe it was, there is still a great chance that Kate will be back for Easter. I repeat, uh, Kate will be back for Easter. So if by some odd chance you are a deranger or a supporter of, of Will and Kate or whatever, and you're just hanging out here because you like to torture yourself, 
Uh, don't worry, she'll be back. She'll be back laughing and grinning and and um, doing all those jazz hands moves and stuff. She'll be back. Now, uh, of course, there is our fave. That is the Duchess of Sussex. And you all, that, of course, was one of, was someone after, you know, the mourning period, they had put this uh, image together. And um, I thought it was absolutely beautiful. Very regal, very serene, very Duchess of Sussex. Looking absolutely amazing. And with that, you guys, I am done. Thank you so much for spending the last two hours and 13 minutes with us here on Royal Sussex. Thank you um, to the moderators that always have managed to keep this a safe space. By the way, moderators, I did go through and permanently blocked a lot of those trolls that were piling up. So I have gotten rid of a lot of those trolls that were piling up from the comments. So uh, keep getting, uh, you know, deleting them and I will go and permanently block them. That way we can keep a troll free environment where we are free to um, have a community without all of that extra so good night, everyone. I am done for today. Thank you so much. Uh, it is a work night for some, and it is morning already for others. But in spite of that, just know when you see our queens, it's time to go. Y'all know what I mean. Yeah, William used to be the hot one. Well, not anymore. And I tell you, Harry is aging very, very well. Very well. You know, every so often they like to say, oh, what about his hair? I don't care about that. I think that his hair frames his face in a very uh, warm way. And if that's the way he wants to wear it, then I'm for it. I'm for it. Because just think about it. When he looks in the mirror, this is what he sees. And he likes what he sees. So um, however he wants to work this out, I am here to support him. But I like, I like the way his hair frames his face. Okay. Oh, Minnie D, you're welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, and of course, our Duchess. Our Duchess, just... <sighs> what could I say? That's our Duchess. Yes, he is very handsome. Very, very handsome. Oh, no, it's been a while, hasn't it? Thank you so much for being here with us. The inside beauty shows up on Harry's face. Yes, it does. Good night, Pam Porter. Okay. Okay. Well, let me find something to close us out with. Let me see if I can find something. Uh, oh, all right. There I am. Okay, you guys, and I'm so glad the new microphone is working out. Um, let that be a lesson to read the instructions first. I have learned my lesson. Read the instructions. Don't try to wing it. The results can be disastrous. <laughs> oh, let me see here. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, this works. This works.
Okay, a prayer for Harry and Meghan supporters. I've shared this one before, but I'll, I'll do it again. It says, oh God, we thank you for the army of supporters of Meghan and Harry who work tirelessly to debunk lies and expose hatred. Watch over them and protect them from their enemies. Keep them steadfast in their purpose, wise in their doings, and grant them success in all their endeavors. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So that was a prayer that was written by one of the squatties. So very, very nice. That is beautiful, though. I don't know who wrote that, but that was beautiful. Okay. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, Sussex Squad. You know, I almost forgot about that. I had forgot to say that all this time for over at least an hour. Thank goodness. Okay, well, let's um let's Madam Duchess our way out of here, okay? And I will see you all tomorrow. All right. Love you guys. Have a good night or a good morning. Oh, 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 oh,